two seconds. Welcome to a week, a week of prayer here at CBN. We call it Seven Days of Blaze, where we are praying for you. We want to pray for you. And if you've got prayer requests, all you have to do is call us, and we'd be glad to pray. 1-800-700-7000. Uh, you can also write to us at CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. Uh, we'd be delighted to pray for you. You can also post your prayer requests on cbn.com. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can post. You can also post on our Facebook page. Uh, whatever way you want to have prayer, we want to gather together to pray for you. And this has been a longstanding tradition here at CBN where the staff of CBN gets together to pray for our viewers. So we want to pray for you. We're going to do that today. I'm going to read some prayer requests for you that have come in. Uh, today is a day where people are requesting prayer for physical healing, healing in their body. So if you have that, we'll be praying for you as well uh, and join together. If you don't have a prayer need, join with us because you're part of this too. You can be part of our week of prayer. There's no time or distance in the spirit when we all join together in prayer. Wonderful things happen. And the book of Revelation records that the prayers of the saints are incense in heaven. You go straight to the throne room. So let your voice be heard in heaven. God wants to hear your prayer. Now, our first request is somebody from the CBN community. They've retired, but uh, Bill is now in the hospital. Uh, he's been revived. He had heart failure, no heartbeat, but he's uh, alive, extremely weak, and needs prayer for healing for his body, healing for his heart. Here's one that's come in to be free of insomnia and the financial burdens that keep me awake, to be healed of ulcerative colitis, healing from 60 years of headaches. Doctors have tried everything. And then a prayer for successful surgery on my left foot. If this surgery isn't successful, my leg will be amputated from the knee. Healing from months of unbearable back and body pain, can't walk, doctors are unable to help. You hear these requests, your heart goes out to them. Realize God's heart goes out to them too. Went out to them before they even requested prayer. When you have that mindset that God loves you, that he created a way before you were even born, before he even founded the earth. He knew what was going to happen, and he made a way forward. That's why Jesus is called the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He is the alpha. He is the omega. He is the reconciler of all to God. He is the one that builds all the bridges back to God. We may have torn them down, but Jesus has built them back and they will stand forever. So let's pray, let's believe, and let's let God do all the rest. Lord, we lift these prayer needs for you. And we just ask now for Bill that you would heal his heart and give him strength in his body. For anyone who can't sleep, who has financial trouble, who is wondering about what to do in the middle of the pandemic, what to do in the middle of all the violence in our cities. Let your peace reign over to their hearts and minds. Give them good sleep, the sleep of the just. For anyone with colitis, anyone facing surgery, anyone having problems with diabetes, all of these things, Lord God, stretch forth your hand to do miracles. And for anyone watching right now, needing physical healing in their bodies, we declare Psalm 103 over them, that you, you forgive all our transgressions. You forgive them all. You heal all our diseases. And if you have healed them and if you have forgiven them, we don't have to carry them anymore. We thank you that you loved us so much that you gave yourself for us. You did it willingly. You did it out of love. You came up with the idea. We didn't. We believe in you. We believe in your unfailing love. 
we believe in the covenant made with your body and your blood. We enter into it now and we say to any disease, any pain in our body, be gone now. I have been bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. It is not I who live anymore, it's Jesus that lives through me. So heal now, Lord. Stretch forth your hand to do miracles, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you need prayer, we're here for you. All you got to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000. You can also go to cbn.com. You can also go to our Facebook page. And again, if you want to use mail-in, it's real easy. Mail to us, CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. Anyway, do it now, 1-800-700-7000. Well, a healthy prayer life is crucial for every Christian. The Apostle Paul urges us to be vigilant, for we are in a spiritual battle wrestling against dark forces. He reminds us to take up our weapons and put on the armor of God. So how do we approach prayer as a soldier would go to war? Well, best-selling author and speaker Stephen Mansfield is here to share the key to warrior prayer. Hello, CBN family. I'm delighted we're in this season of prayer and intercession. And so I want to talk to you about four warrior prayers that we ought to be praying over ourselves during this time. Let's get to it. I'm sure you've read in 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 17 of the time that Elisha was stuck with his servant in the city called Dothan. And overnight, when, when Elisha got up the next morning, he discovered that overnight, foreign troops and foreign chariots had surrounded the city. Well, his servant, as you may recall, freaked out. Oh, Lord, what are we going to do? How are we going to get out of this? And Elisha says to comfort him, don't be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And then Elisha prays something very important for his servant, something that we're going to make a prayer over us. He says, oh, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. Let's change those words just a little bit. Open his eyes that he may see what? The true nature of the war going on around us. And then the Bible tells us, then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots, uh, full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. What happened? The servant was able to see the true nature of the warfare going on. This is what we need. As we're in a seating, as we're praying for our nation, as we're praying for the world, as we're praying for churches and ministries, as we're, we're, we're praying for people groups, we need to not just rely on what we see in the news or our own thoughts and impressions. We need to have our eyes opened by the Lord to what's truly going on so we know how to pray and we know how to war. So let's make this our prayer right now. Lord, open our eyes that we might see the true nature of the spiritual battles going on and know how to contend in them. All right, number two. In, in Psalm 144 and verse one, uh, the scriptures say this, praised be to the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. Now, I wanna suggest that this scripture can really be understood as a prayer for us to have, play our individual role, for us to be specifically trained for what we are called to do in prayer and intercession. As believers in Jesus, we all have a general calling to prayer and a general calling to spiritual warfare and a general calling to put on the full armor of God. But then we also have our unique individual purposes and gifts and sensitivities. I find, for example, when I pray because of what I'm called to do, I end up praying for leaders. I pray for kings and presidents and prime ministers. I pray for governing realms. I, I, I intercede for the leaders of people groups and organizations and CEOs and so on. Uh, no, nobody really knows about it, uh, but it's my unique sensitivity, my unique calling. My, 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 the, the, it's rooted in history. It's rooted in scripture. It's something that I'm gifted to do. There are others who are gifted to do that, but, but, but then still others are called to maybe pray for sports figures, or maybe others are called to pray specifically for, uh, you know, for missionary efforts, or everybody's got their unique 
uh, giftings and sensitivities and abilities in prayer in addition to their general callings and giftings as believers. Well, we want to be prepared for those. We want to be skilled for those. I want the Lord to teach me and to prepare me and to hone me and to make me more sensitive and teach me scriptures and even nurture understanding from history and maybe from what's going on in the news so that I'm, I'm able to pray more effectively. So let's turn this to prayer. Lord, prepare our hands for battle, our fingers for war. Teach us, train us, sharpen us, give us that general Christian gifting for war and intercession, but also give us the unique training for what you've uniquely called each one of us as an individual to do, those sensitivities, those perceptions that help us to intercede in unique ways. All right, number three. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 says, No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Well, you know, this is, this is fascinating because what the scripture is not saying is that soldiers shouldn't have civilian affairs. What the scripture is not saying uh, is that there aren't civilian matters that soldiers have to deal with. Soldiers have car payments and they have bodily needs and they have, you know, need to press their uniforms and they have house payments and they have husbands or wives or children. Uh, soldiers have civilian matters to take care of, things that are common to the rest of society. But what they're told not to do in this scripture is to not become entangled by them. My father was a high ranking officer during the whole time that I was growing up. And I can tell you, you know, he fought in Korea, he fought in Vietnam, he was involved in the Cold War in Europe quite a bit. He was in intelligence and special forces. And he would make sure that the civilian affairs, the, the business matters and other matters that pertain to our family were all dealt with before he went to battle, before he went away on assignment. Why? So that he would not be distracted, so that he certainly would love his family and they'd be provided for but also so that he could focus. He was an intelligence officer. If he didn't pay attention to what he was doing, uh, people might die. People might be harmed in some way. He had to do his job well. He was a good soldier. And so he sought to please this commanding officer and he took care of civilian affairs so that he did not become entangled in them. That's the operative word that Paul uses in talking to Timothy. So that's the issue for us. It's not that we shouldn't have business matters and family matters and payments and you know, jobs and things to take care of, but especially during these seasons of prayer and intercession, it's critical that we not be entangled by civilian affairs, the normal business of life. I'm, I'm guilty of this. I have an active mind. I can get minutes into prayer or a few days into a season of prayer and intercession and find myself distracted, find my mind pulled off. It's not that I'm undisciplined, it's that I've got other things that I'm thinking about. It's that I praying about one thing causes my mind to run to another. I've gotta be careful not to be entangled in civilian affairs so that I can please my commanding officer, in my case, Jesus Christ, and I can pray and war as he has called me to. Very important, let's turn that to prayer for us right now. Oh, living God, help us Give us grace to disentangle ourselves from civilian affairs, get them in proper order so we can devote ourselves to the seasons of prayer and intercession that you've called us to with clear minds, focused hearts to please you. And then finally, number four, we're told two things about the kingdom of darkness that should challenge us and change our prayer life. Number one, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11, we're told not to be ignorant, depending on the translation you're using. It's either probably schemes or wiles. Don't be ignorant of the devil's wiles. Don't be ignorant of his schemes. The Greek word there is noema. It means purposes or intentions of the mind. You might just use the word strategies. So the kingdom of darkness has strategies. Let's hold right there. I'll, I'll add something else to it, and then I'll comment. We're told in Ephesians 6.11, uh, not to be ignorant, not to be unaware of his, uh, it's translated schemes or wiles again, but it's the Greek word methodia. We obviously come, we get our English word method from it, tactics, uh, specific practical approaches. So we're told the kingdom of darkness has strategies and specific methods or tactics. Well, when we pray, when we intercede, we need to be very careful to ask the Lord to give us the counter to the strategies 
and the methods of the kingdom of darkness. In other words, we need to be asking for the same thing. Lord, what is the strategy uh, in praying for Washington, D.C.? What is the strategy in praying for a president, for a governor? Not just abstractly, but this specific one. Uh, I'm sitting uh, right now in, in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, there's a mayor of the city. There's a governor of the city. There's uh, a strategy of the kingdom of darkness against the city. There are specific methods against the city. Now, Heavenly Father, would you give me the prayer strategies that are just as strategic, if not more so, uh, and, and the practical tactics, uh, how to teach me how to intercede in the practical tactics that counter the tactics of the devil. In other words, having this military intelligence about the kingdom of darkness means that we also can have military, we, we can ask the Lord for military intelligence that lets us spring and counter the strategies and the tactics of the kingdom of darkness. Let's turn this to prayer. Living God, give us strategic approaches to our prayer life. Give us specific tactics to our prayer life that trigger, expose, and counter the strategies and the tactics of the kingdom of darkness. So while we're during this in this season of prayer, let's pray these four warrior prayers from Scripture over ourselves. They're words from Scripture. They're things we're meant to pray, and they can give us victory during this exciting time.